We are I. I'm watching that 1883 show right now and you know, I wish I was the type of person that I was maybe, I don't know, years ago. And I guess I've done this a couple times like in the past, but I wish I had maybe the the willingness. I mean, I can't say time because I technically would have the time if I would allocate it to it, but to binge watch a show. But the one nice thing about this show when I look at it and, you know, as extreme as this may seem, I understand when you watch these shows and how I was raised on a farm in southern Alberta, the things that I was taught, the things that I seen, the things that I absorbed, and then through all the history that I've researched and I've heard and I've absorbed and the doctrines that were wrote, the past doctrines that once were, and when you look at the history and the the countries now, the nations that still live by some of these codes a lot more authentically than what we do. You know, when when you have people and when you have them talking about, hey, like, like why are you why are you going through such struggle? Why are you going so far to a land that's so unknown that you have no idea what might be there? You just hope that there is something when you get there. You know, this promised land, that's what, you know, North America as we know it, I guess minus Mexico, we have Canada and the United States, that's what it was promised. And a lot of those promises were broken, shitty promises. You know, BC being one of them, you know, encouraging people to come here to farm and they show up and it's all mountains. So, but the grit, the grit that these people had. They're like, no, I, I, I feel something. Or even with the promise, it is better than where I'm coming from. Because persecution there, the lack of opportunity there, in my mind, those things supersede the unknown. So I'm going to go. Because that unknown is not as scary as staying. The unknown is, is more sure than the success of the knowing. You know, that kind of, that kind of authenticity to life saying, I, I am so confident in my ability that I will go somewhere. They have no idea what it looks like. I have no idea what is there. I have no idea what the people are like what the soil is like, what the conditions are like, what the weather patterns are like. I don't know any of that. But I am so fucking confident in my skills as a human being. I will travel for months, if not years, to get to where I want to go, to where I think that things may be better. Like, think about that. How many people nowadays have the skills to completely uproot their entire lives and their immediate and extended family's lives. And he had enough people that were willing to be able to pitch together to be able to say, hey, like we have the skills to survive anywhere at any time. Not even knowing what anywhere or any time even looks like. But you go. And you try. Because you have to. You have no choice. Because there's something inside you that's nagging at you that says this isn't right. Just like today. Just like today for people who are in the center. Center right. Center left. Libertarian. Think of the massive amount of population that lies within that category. Massive amount. Like 90% or higher of the people around us fall within inside that category. 
And people like that just got up and left. The people who had the courage to leave. But then when you get there and that same mindset, that same mentality, that same person, that same drive. You know, when you get there, and especially in the West, the frontier, the prairies of, you know, Canada and the United States. You know, at one point in time in this show, these three guys steal from this woman and children whose husband has died in this, you know, the leader of this wagon train. He goes, and he threatens to kill them. And then he chops off the arm of their wagon that attaches to their horses. He said, I don't care what fucking way you go, north, south, or east, but you ain't going where I'm going, which is to the west. And it's like, yeah, fucking right. Yes, right? Because you know what that does is it, it doesn't make people fall in line in a way that says, I'm going to tell you what to think and what to see, like what JT does here in Canada, now that they're going to be censoring podcasts. Like how insane is that? Censoring podcasts. They already censor social media. We've already proved lots of examples for me and so many other people have too that, you know, you can't see this content in Canada. So it says across, you know, all the meta channels. But what this does is saying like, hey, Tell me why you would think, to argue with me why you think stealing from people is a good idea. And if fucking you think that's a good idea, here's your walking paper. So if you live in fear that there's going to be reprisal for you stealing from people, well, that's healthy fear. That's healthy fear that you should have in a functioning society. Because stealing from people is wrong. And it should make you feel uncomfortable. And it should make you lie awake at night. Not like some of the doctrines that are out there with inside Canada and the United States now that you can steal from people, you know, up to like a $1,000 or whatever. And you have people walking into Lululemons and Walmarts and Rite Aids and liquor stores and everything and stealing $999 and nobody can do a goddamn thing about it. Tell me how that's functional. It's not. It's absolutely not. You know, and... In another portion of this movie, these these guys come in to a into this wagon train when the when the men of this wagon train are out collecting wild cattle so that they have something to eat on these months long journeys. There's hundreds of people in this wagon train. And these guys come in and they they kind of semi raid this this group and almost rape one of the women. And once these men get back, they ride into town and they meet up with, you know, one of the Texas Rangers and, you know, they go to the local bar. They walk in and they say, you know, who are these people? So a guy points them out. And without question, the lead Texas Ranger just walks around, he shoots every single one of these. There's like four or five guys. And he says to everybody, if you want to do this, if you want to do things like this in my town, you're going to challenge me as a gunman, and I am the only gunman in this town. And it's like, again, if you are going to live in fear, this is healthy fear. If you think raping women is a good idea, here's your fucking walking papers to your pine box. This is not a good idea. If you want to ride in as a bunch of thugs and steal and rape and pillage, you should live in healthy fear that that's not right and that there may be a pine box waiting for you sooner than later. That's healthy fear. But the thing is to trickle down from all these healthy fears in a functioning society, they make us live a certain way, not in global fear of just, you know, everything that you're doing is wrong. If you put up a sign, it's wrong. If you walk down this part of the road, it's wrong. It's like not that kind of fear fear of alignment where, you know, you go into any municipality now and there's literally thousands and thousands and thousands of fucking bylaws that are just absolute horse shit. This treating adults like kids, but at the end of the day, there's a certain part of that because there is no healthy fear of a society because there's absolutely no real tangible consequence. 
But when you take these things that are absolutely fucking wrong, unnecessary and malicious murder, rape, theft, these things that are just absolutely wholly wrong in a functioning society. If there's real consequences, like you really have to understand what you're doing in that situation and the consequences that come along. You act differently. It's like when you're a kid and you're scared of your parents. You act differently. You test the waters, but you act differently. But we're even taking that away from parents. And I'm not condoning like, you know, murder. I'm not condoning parents hitting their children or anything along these lines. But the one thing I know, when you have a healthy, respectful fear of your parents as a child, you act differently. You do. You absolutely do. We all see the kids who own their parents and how that situation ends up. And it is disgustingly gross. But then those kids grow up. And they grow up and then more of them grow up and then that seed gets planted and more of them grow up. And it's like, that's the world that we live in today where we allow small minorities to be able to control the voice of the majority, which is not right, which is what we have here in Canada, especially because the majority of Canadians only want JT in office. And he's one of these kicking and screaming trust fund babies. So my hat's off to once was where there was healthy fear. Having a little bit of healthy fear goes a long fucking way. 